know, what many do not understand is currently 60% of health care expenditures in this country are paid for by government programs. 60%. It's interesting that Senator Baucus doesn't think that the uh, governmental plan should be at the table when right now the governmental plan is covering 60% of our nation. Medicare is a true single-payer system. Those that say single-payer is a bad idea should tell all the elderly Americans we are going to eliminate that program. I don't think that Senator Baucus would stand a chance at re-election if he eliminated Medicare and mandated that our elderly purchase insurance from the not for pro for the nor from the for-profit insurance industry. What do you think? You think if any politician said we're getting rid of Medicare because that's that rotten single-payer system, what would happen to their chances of staying in office? For the mat for that matter, think of the reception our wounded war heroes would get from the for-profit insurance industry. Providing health care to those soldiers returning back from Iraq and Afghanistan with amputations and head injuries would be a terrible, terrible investment for the shareholders of those companies. I'm sure the insurance company would develop new underwriting rules that would treat prior military service as a pre-existing condition <laughs> and reject soldiers from our health care coverage. You know, thank God we have our young men and women returning from those wars have that socialistic system we call the VA. Think about these things. Think about it. You know, the other thing I hear is how bad the Canadian system is doing, that other single-payer model. To this I respond that Canada spends half as much as we do per capita, covers all of its citizens, and has better health outcomes than we do. The waiting lines that have been told is terrible have been significantly improved and decreased and many are now meeting the acceptable national standards that are published. Matter of fact, each province in Canada measures the waiting times and posts these numbers on the internet for all to see. You know, I would love to compare the waiting time of a, of a person in the United States of America to, that of, to the Canadian citizen, but we don't measure that in our, in our country. Besides, I have patients who don't even get in line because they have no insurance. They have no way of paying for the things I want. Their wait is forever. Lastly, I remind those trying to put the fear of socialism in my face that Tommy Douglas, the architect of the Canadian healthcare system, was voted the greatest Canadian of all time in a nationwide contest involving 1.2 million votes just three years ago. Think about that. Why would this, this, this nation to the north of us vote this man, the greatest Canadian, if he delivered for them a terrible health care system? It doesn't make sense. By the way, where do you think Lyndon Johnson got the name Medicare from when he enacted this program in 1965? That's right, from the neighbors to the north, Canada. It is our job to demand that the single-payer voice is not only seated at the table, but has the most prominent voice because of truth and righteousness. When people tell me we cannot switch to a single-payer system, I tell them they're wrong. The most important pieces of the health care are the patients and the providers, not the insurance industry. The medical infrastructure, doctors, nurses, the ancillary providers, the pharmacies, hospitals, this is all in place and up and running. Why do we give so much power to the least important piece of the healthcare system? The answer is we don't give them the power. They take it. They take it. The single-payer system is the only true mechanism to contain the escalating and unsustainable costs of our system. It is true there will be decreased reimbursements to our specialty physicians and hospitals, but trust me, the current salaries and profits that are being generated today have quite a cushion to keep any of those entities from going broke. More and more physicians are seeing the light. Primary care physicians are much more supportive of the single-payer system than my specialty physicians 
But even those, that group is beginning to understand the greater good that will be served with this reform. As one of my orthopedic friends stated just two nights ago, my colleagues and I will be okay if there's a bit and drop in, a converse, in the compensations. Now, unfortunately, not all physicians agree, and this debate may pit primary care and patients against the specialists. But my concern is more for my current patients and the future, our children. Single payer is the best solution for America. Now one thing that is absolutely true is that the insurance industry would be the big loser with the single payer reform. But I don't think there's very few, not only here but everywhere, that have a lot of sympathy towards this group. The Physicians for a National Health Plan and the current bill in Congress that we heard about, H.R. 676, have proposed that the folks that would lose their jobs in this, in this uh, insurance industry, the thousands and thousands that are in, in obstructing health care, would actually be retrained to help deliver health care. What a concept. We would have a system that would cover all Americans, would take care of the people that would lose their jobs, what a concept. However, as, as Senator Carroll has pointed out with, with her discussions about the pharmaceutical world, the healthcare industry, all totaled, is a $2.4 trillion business. Let me repeat that number. $2.4 trillion. That's 24 followed by 11 zeros. This is the main reason that our leaders in Washington have a tough time seeing the evidence and facts. There's just too many zeros in the way. Now think about this. One of my patients came into my office with stacks of legitimate reports and medical books that question my current treatment of their disease and asks me to consider changing my treatment. And my response to them is, I'm sorry, but, but that option is off the table. What do you think would happen? I'll tell you what would happen. They would promptly leave my office and brand me as a bad doctor, and rightly so. Although we cannot change our Washington politicians as easily as doctors, we can continue to pressure them and insist they address our needs. Fear and greed are the obstacles to getting the United States of America up to the standards with the rest of the industrialized world. Universal health care is a right, and single payer is the smartest way to get us there. Let me say that one more time. Universal ca health care is a right, and single payer is the smartest way to get us there. Single payer. Everybody in, nobody out. It simplifies life for all. It has immediate cost savings. The only way to control medical costs and make our system sustainable and available for our children. Single payer. Thank you very much.